Warning. This work of fiction, intended for adults, contains strong language, graphic depictions of violence, and themes of self-harm and suicide. Discretion advised. The Ballad of the Flower, Book 2, Ranger, written and performed by Neil Lensenmeyer. Chapter 3 It was Adam's shift when Carson woke up. They were camped by the spring, but Adam made sure he could see at least one of the moons through the canopy. Adam knew better than to try and keep Carson down if he wanted to get up. Yesterday had been an exception, and Carson hadn't fought him too hard. Adam held out some water, just to see if he could sit up and take the skin from him. He managed, and sat next to Adam. Did they get my face? Carson's voice was hoarse. No, but Tara had to amputate your nose. Carson spat out his water before slugging Adam in the shoulder. I'm glad you're okay. Being in charge sucks. Yeah? Not planning a mutiny anytime soon? Carson held out a hand, and Adam touched it with his own. And have to worry about all these idiots? No thanks. Adam looked at Carson. You okay? Carson stretched and touched his nose. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Any word on Siri? She's alive, but she's being held by mags in a fortified position somewhere on the north side of the island. Adam looked over at Tatera, sleeping peacefully next to the fire. Can we get to her? Of course we can get to her. She's being used as bait. They'll keep her alive as long as they think we'll come for her. Adam gave him a look. Yes, we're going to come for her. We'll head out tomorrow and find Nerevan. Adam felt his heart sink. Why Nerevan? He's out with a few troops securing the other water sources. He's the most exposed. Carson looked at Adam. You all right? Adam rubbed his own shoulder. Adam, he was going to have us executed, Carson said gently. Wren was going to have us executed, Adam countered. And who was going to carry out those orders? Adam, I understand how you feel. Carson put a hand on Adam's back. He was already regaining his strength. If it comes down to it, we need to protect each other. Yeah, I know. Adam put a hand through his hair and took a breath. What's with the tattoo? Carson touched his chest. Yeah, that... that's a story. We've got a full moon and a good fire. I'm... pretty sure I drowned. Adam had to turn his whole body to look at him. I know Tara is our medic now, but you seem remarkably undrowned, in my humble opinion. Well, I came back. You came back? Adam had to quiet himself when he saw Barney start to stir. You came back from drowning? I think I spoke to the goddess of death, Carson sighed. Adam had to take a second. Weren't we talking about the tattoo? He was taking a good look at it now, a circle of vines around his heart with two scarlet flowers blooming. It's a list, Carson said. Adam looked at him. It's a list of people who... Carson cleared his throat. <clears throat> a list of people I prayed to kill. You prayed to kill people? Adam leaned back, staring straight up at the tree branches. Of course you did. Of course you did. I didn't think it would work, Carson said with quiet exasperation. How was I supposed to know Altrix was listening? Maybe the fact that we have a fucking druid might have tipped you off to that. Adam was rubbing his face. So she marked you with a list of people to kill. She told me to protect Tara. Adam sat up. Carson, we cannot get involved in god shit. Look at me. Look at me, Dorethy. Adam put his hands on Carson's face. We cannot get involved with god shit. They are petty, dangerous bastards, and we don't want any of that. It's a little late now, Carson frowned. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. Adam put his hands on his legs as he sat. Did she tell you why? Huh? Why are we protecting Terra? Dangers ahead, super vague. Super vague dangers ahead, Godship, gotcha, motherfuck. Adam went on a roll of profanity for just under six minutes. In the meantime, Carson drank water and stretched. When Adam was done, he put a hand out and Carson touched it. We need to tell Terra. 
that I died and met her god, or that she's got some amazing destiny that we have to keep her alive for. I was thinking about Siri, but yeah, that might be important too. Adam took a look at the tattoo. What happens if you don't kill those people? I mean, the consequences of disobeying a death god should be pretty self-evident, Carson said, touching his chest. I need to find a shirt. There aren't a ton of clean ones left. Adam stretched his arms over his head. We'll get you something nice when we get out of here. Yeah, about that, Carson said, setting a log on the fire. Where exactly are we? Inalia, Adam said. No place? It's just what Barney told me. As far as we know, we're very far south. It's summer here? Carson scowled and moved closer to the fire. We can't be here for winter. We'll be gone by then, Adam rubbed his forehead. Or dead. Hey, you're well rested, aren't you? Not really, I'm still pretty tired. Great, take the rest of my watch. Adam patted Carson on the shoulder and curled up next to the fire. They were glad to have Carson back. And even without coffee, he didn't seem grumpy at all. They talked about curses, and Tara scolded him for making deals with things beyond his understanding, but otherwise it was a happy reunion. Until the conversation came to Siri. Well, we have to go get her, Tara said, eating a few berries. We'll go after breakfast. That's a bad idea, Carson said. He looked to Adam, probably asking for some sort of backup. We aren't at full strength, and they're up at the fort. It's a lighthouse, Tara said. It's not some impenetrable fortress. We can get in there, no problem. I'm not worried about getting in. I'm worried about what happens when we show up. Carson scratched his head. Mags has orders to capture us, but summary execution is still an option for her. Then we have to go now, Tara said, standing up. She might kill Siri whenever she feels like it. She's not going to kill Siri, Barney said. The best plan is to keep her alive to get us all together. That's what Marcy would have suggested. How do we know Marcy's alive? Tara asked, and Carson pointed to the two scarlet blooms on his chest. Bertrand and Ratch, Carson said. Our best plan is to take out Nerevin before he gets back into the lighthouse. Adam gulped, but nobody seemed to notice. We stand a better chance of taking out Nerevin if we're at full strength, Tara said, crossing her arms. We have a better chance of getting Siri if we don't get flanked by an elf and his group. Carson sighed. Well, we can take the lighthouse and defend it if it's such a defensible position, Tara said. If we take out Nerevin first, Mags might rely on reinforcements that won't come, Marnie said, finishing his leaves. Adam. Tara looked at him. His stomach fell again. Talk some sense into these people. We're getting Siri first. Adam took a breath. He didn't want to hunt Nerevin. Nellie was strong and quick and brave, but not to the point of stupidity. It would be a tricky fight with just him, but he had people to protect, which would make him fight harder. Do we know how many people he has with him? Adam asked. A standard Selenian prison ship has a crew of 300, Barney recited. Ratch had maybe 20, Carson said. We have to assume they split their guard evenly. Well, we can just send in Carson and he'll take them all out, Tara said. You managed it yesterday, didn't you? That was an ambush, Carson said. A series of ambushes. And honestly, I don't remember a lot of it. I just kind of go sometimes. They all looked away from him. Terrifying implications of that aside, Adam said. You clear out the branches before you chop a tree down. Siri would try and save you, Tara said. She wouldn't let anything stop her if you guys got captured. Siri's a fucking monster, though, Adam said. If I was Siri, I'd probably go right on in, but we're a wizard with no spellbook, a ranger with no bow, a cursed fighter, and a druid. I don't like our odds. Nerevin might tell us a way to get into the lighthouse, Barney said. You think he's just going to give that up? Adam asked. He will if we torture him, Carson said. We're not torturing anyone. Let's be very clear on that. Adam wanted to smack him just for suggesting it. Why not? They're probably torturing Siri, Carson said. They're torturing Siri, and we're not going after her first? The wind picked up around Terra. Smooth, Carson. Adam had to fix his hair from the breeze. We've got to rescue Siri, Terra said, and the wind died down a bit. Terra, Siri's going to be okay, Carson said. Siri is strong, and Mags isn't trying to kill her. 
That's worse. Tara looked like she was going to beat all of them. How long are they going to keep her like that? She doesn't do well when she can't see the sky. Incidentally, the sky was beginning to cloud over. Tara, let's take it easy. Adam kept his eyes on the clouds. Let's just remember the consequences of our actions. Tara glowered at him, but the sun began to shine again. Carson, I think we should make a decision. The decision is already made. We're taking out Nerevin, then getting Siri, Carson said. Adam sort of squished his hands together and tried to finish his leaves. An empty stomach would not be helpful. Siri would vote with me, Tara mumbled. It'd still be three to two, Barney said. With the added sunshine, it was easy to find and follow a trail. Five people, at the most. It was almost too easy to tell Nerevin's light footfalls from the others. As far as Adam could tell, he was in good health, if a little thin. Elvish dumbass. He had to know they were after him. He had to know that Carson wouldn't stop. Why didn't he just run? There was nothing wrong with running from an enemy. He was still here because Mags needed him. The thought fell on Adam like an owl bear. Just as he was prepared to die for Carson, Nellie was ready to die for Mags. Really? For her? Was he any better than the elf? His loyalty wasn't blind, was it? Carson was his friend, of course, more than a friend. He had saved him from a life of monotony. He'd given him a choice when he felt more trapped than he did on this island. If there was a time to disobey, it was now. He could turn Nerevin. He didn't have to kill him. They could have another set of eyes when they went to find Ciri, another set of hands to help them escape, and another mouth to feed. Adam snapped to attention with the sound of someone coughing in the distance. He crouched and heard the others do the same behind him. He sent Tara a few feet ahead, and as she moved her hands, a heavy fog came over them and the path and the rest of the woods. There were sounds of people moving, trying to get closer to each other. Adam could barely hear a sigh through the fog, the breath of a man resigned to his fate. Carson moved past his left, his body slinking like some sort of big cat through the fog, predator and prey. It's just the way of things. Adam moved into the fog and laid a hand on Tara's shoulder. She had a grim look on her face, but she was ready. Adam readied his own stolen swords and set further into the fog. He had practice recognizing Carson's deceptively light steps. Even out of his armor, he was easy to tell apart from the quick-moving, nervous soldiers. There were gurgling sounds and a few slashes of steel. Adam was ready. He rose, turning just as a sword brushed past him. Adam let the momentum carry the soldier and drew his blade against their stomach. He gave another slash against the exposed neck and moved on. Carson was dealing with the others, which just left Nerevin. He was here somewhere. Adam felt his presence like a shadow. The fog was heavy and the smell of blood was starting to leak through. Adam stood still, listening. Carson was just about finished with his part. Tara and Barney weren't close. Adam found that half-place, that sort of in-between where his senses were more than his own. He smelled sweat and sandalwood. We don't have to kill each other, Adam said into the mist. I know you saved Tara. We can work something out. You really think so? Nerefin's voice came from somewhere behind him, and Adam snapped towards it. Ren wants you all dead. Says you know too much about the war. The war is a lie, Nelly. Adam squeezed the hilt of his swords. It's just to profit and control people. Do you want to be a part of that? Adam had to turn his whole body to face Nerevin's voice as it said, You've seen what free people do. They hurt each other. They squabble over stupid things like religion and politics, but with a common enemy? Everyone wants to work together to support the crown. Nerevin had a syrupy quality to his voice, like he really believed what he was saying. Adam had heard similar sounds in the voices of priests preparing pyres. This couldn't be Nelly. Not his Nelly. Not the man who had kissed his scars and called him beautiful. People will work together if we help them. 
Adam stifled a shake in his voice. People want to help each other. We don't need to force them with fear. Adam kept his swords raised and his eyes closed as he focused his ears on the mist. Do you see him? Carson's voice crashed into his mind and he felt himself lose focus for an instant. He was being pulled back into strong, tanned arms and a blade was against his throat. Hey, Hawk. Hey, Nelly. Adam dropped his swords and touched Nerevan's hand. Clear it out, Terra. He's got me. The fog vanished. Terra and Barney were safe, maybe twenty feet away. Carson was close and had fresh blood on him. Drop your weapon, Nerevan said. Carson rolled his shoulders back, but held tight to his stolen sword. Drop it, Dorethi, Nerevan said again, and moved the blade closer to Adam's throat. He's not going to drop it, now. He's going to kill you no matter what. You know what they're like. Adam patted Nerevan's hand. Nerevan adjusted again, this time to a more defensive stance. Don't try to run. You know I'm faster. Adam could feel Nerevan's heart racing, looking for some sort of way out. I can chase you through the woods, and I'm too heavy to use as a shield. Even if you kill me, it's just going to piss Carson off, Adam said. He was talking about torturing you. And if I'm not here to protect you, well, like I said, you know how they are. I want to take you all alive, Nerevin whispered into Adam's ear. I can convince Max to keep you alive, to get you to the capital, to a tribunal. We're past that, Nerevin, Adam sighed. Nerevin kept his grip firm. We know how this is going to end. Adam closed his eyes to keep himself from crying. Just let me handle it he whispered. He felt Nerevin relax. He could hear Carson relaxing too, a deep sigh. The others stood ready. Nerevin lowered his sword and carefully palmed it into Adam's hand. Can you make it quick? Nerevin asked. Adam patted the arm that was still around his throat. Can you tell us how to get to Siri? Adam felt Nerevin's heart slowing down, realization and acceptance. There's an entrance on the north side, near the beach. Go in through there. Nerevin's grip turned into an embrace. Adam let out a shaky breath and kissed the arm that was holding him. He held his eyes closed as he broke away, turned, and slashed. Adam braced himself for the flood, but nothing came. The blood on his sword was barely red anymore. He watched Terra bury the bodies. He watched Carson wash himself in the spring, a new, beautiful blossom growing over his heart. As they all drank and cleaned themselves, Adam joined them, numb and empty. His heart pumped. His lungs took in air. His eyes saw and his ears heard. He was fine. And it scared him. End of chapter.